Then you need to come and bless you. Let's pray. Dear God and Father, we pray your blessing upon Todd this morning as he ministers to us. We pray that you would open his eyes and we'd see the truth of the word and display it to our hearts. We pray that you would open his ears and he may hear your voice and share that with us. We pray that you would open his mind to enlighten him with the truth of your word to bring glory to Jesus and blessing to our lives. We pray that you would loose his tongue and his mouth to speak forth the truth this day. May your blessing and your filling of the Holy Spirit be on him and on us today as we listen in Jesus' name. Amen. Sandy praying for me, are you singing low, low, how rows are moving? I'm thoroughly blessed. Were you born in a barn? How many of you have heard that said to you? Why? Why do they say it? You left the door open. Why is that bad? Why? Slides. You let the heat out? My dad always said you let the cold in. My mom always. What else can you get in? Yeah. We got a cat that was always trying to bolt in. Maybe even strangers could come in. If the barn door is left open, anybody can come in. I wonder if Jesus in his teenage years ever ran out the house and left the door open and Mary or Joseph hollered, Hey, were you born in a barn? <laughs> and he would have, you know, turned and said, Actually, <laughs> if you look at the front of your bulletin, you will see a fairly accurate depiction of where, where we think Jesus might have been born. It wasn't necessarily a barn, it was more of a cave, but it was what they used for a barn. There's no door on it. Jesus came into the world in a place that had an open door. When he died, the door was pushed open, and even now, we live with the reality that the door is open for us to walk into a relationship with Jesus. I'm so thankful that Jesus was born in a barn and that the door remains open even today. I want to welcome you back to our third message in the series, Annunciations, where we focused on angels at Christmas who point us to Jesus. In Luke's Gospel, we've encountered angels making quick, quiet stops with individuals, almost like they're just sneaking in and sneaking out. Heaven was stirring. Something big is going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. First, as you recall, there was the Annunciation to Zechariah, that John, his son, would be the forerunner to Jesus, the Savior of the world. Next was the Annunciation to Mary, that Jesus, the Savior, was indeed coming, and coming through her. But now no more sneaking. God has an annunciation to make to the world. And I've tried to encapsulate it in our point, if you would like to say it with me. It's right under where you are born in a barn, Luke 2, 8, 2, 8 to 20. The point. Let's say it together. Angels announced on Christmas that Jesus entered into our mess. There's a wonderful weirdness about this. A strange specialness that should make us stop and simply thank God that Jesus chose to be born in a barn. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Of course, if you ran out the house this morning and you forgot your Bible, don't worry. We've got a few experts there. I think if you use the U Bibles, then they're for you to use. If you don't have a Bible you can read and understand at home, that you own, we would love it if you would take it and read it. 
and now even to uh, follow along with us is a great thing. So we're in Luke chapter 2. Did you make it to verse 8? Alright. Please feel free to follow along. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was, has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Points to ponder questions to consider. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of this Christmas? Angels had watched humans for thousands of years. They knew that we needed a Savior, and so the Annunciation came. Don't be afraid. We bring good news of great joy for all people. A blaze angel appears in the darkness. The awesome presence of a heavenly being is terrifying. You and I would have been terrified too. But the angel says, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid. Because unlike Old Testament angels, or angels sometimes brought really bad news, like get out of Eden and stay out. Or I've come to blow up your city, Sodom and Gomorrah. Or I'm going to make your donkey talk now. Ooh, this is the stuff that angels told people. Okay? So it was right that they would be afraid. But not this time. This angel is saying, I'm bringing good news of great joy. Now why is the good so great? Because who's the news for? Who's it for? Take a guess. Or just read the Bible. All oh, people. It's for you and it's for me and it's for us today. At that moment, 400 years of silence was broken. At that moment, since the last Old Testament prophet had spoken, the silence is broken with a song. Oh, you better not pout. You better not cry. You better not shout. I'm telling you why. Who? <coughs> Jesus Christ is coming to town. See, they ripped that song off. This for Jesus. He's the one that was coming to town. It says so right here. He's coming to town. What town? The town of David. Here's the proof. He'll be born in a barn. That's where majors are. Majors are feeding troughs. They got it. They were shepherds. Well, except for that one finished carpenter that's up here. <laughs> so it's it's alright. Do what you need to do. I wonder if at that point fear turned into laughter. Really? The Savior of the Lord is going to be born in a barn? Really? I wonder if at a certain point there may have been a different kind of fear that would have come up. A fear that said, I don't know if this guy's for real. Really? A guy, a guy in, a, in a barn. A baby born in a barn is going to be our Savior. I'm afraid... That might not be enough for our mess. Let's just reflect for a moment or two about our own fears this Christmas. It's been a scary week for the small town of Smithville, hasn't it? A murder down the road a quarter mile away. A sudden death at a school concert. Among the other scary things that may have happened to you that the papers didn't catch, or nobody was witness to in the gymnasium. What are you afraid of 
And do you believe that the baby born in a barn can actually help you overcome those fears today? I hope you do. Because I know it can. Let's see what the shepherds did in verses 13 through 16. Verses 13 through 16. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Question to consider, where, where are you hurrying to this Christmas? Where are you hurrying to? It's really hard to imagine this spectacle. Lord, what do you at this time? The small group that's going to Israel will be standing in the, in the fields of Bethlehem. We'll be standing there, but even when you stand there, it's hard to imagine the spectacle that would have looked and sounded like perhaps the sky was exploding. Here's the point. All of heaven was excited, and they wanted the world to know. Maybe the shepherds were like me, and they just needed a second time of hearing it. They needed a little bit of flash boom get their attention. It worked. The town of David is translated for us. You see, it's Bethlehem. And so they hurried off. Now maybe they hurried off because they were indeed so excited, and I believe they were. Maybe they hurried off because the sheep had taken off in the general direction of Bethlehem. What we know is they hurried. I think the hurry is huge. What are you hurrying to? This Christmas? Sales? Shows? Who are you hurrying to go see? Friends? Family? Santa? Would you take just a moment or two to hurry over to Jesus? Would you hurry out to seek Him in prayer? Would you hurry to his word and seek him out in there? Would you hurry in your serving and giving to others who will never give back to you? Because in that way we hurry to Jesus and what he calls us to be. I'm amazed at all I hurry to. But do I hurry? That is, do I make a priority? to be with Jesus like the shepherds did. I believe in hearing the Annunciation to the shepherds. We get our Annunciation. Come and see. Come and be with the Lord. We'll finish out with verses 17 to 20. When they had seen Him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Question to consider. What are you spreading around? spreading around this Christmas. Little, little bonus angel application right off of verse 20. Just a bonus for you. It happened just as they were told. Of course it did. Who told them? An angel did. A little angel tip. Angels don't lie. If an angel tells you something, and it didn't turn out to be true, here's the news. It wasn't an angel. Okay? Just to clarify. Angels have to tell the truth. 
But then they took what they told and it became bold in sharing the angel's annunciation. <clears throat> but did the angels get the praise? Did the angels get the glory? No way. Real angels always point to God's work in the world and then fall back in worship to God. People always direct their praise to God Almighty for what He has done. These shepherds spread the word, praising and glorifying God for all the things they had heard and seen. So what are you spreading around this Christmas? There's usually a window after Christmas. You know about it. When people come up to you and say, So, how was Christmas? Or they may even be a little more direct and say, So, what did you get? May I suggest this is an opportunity to glorify and praise God. Not for what you got, but for what He has given. And I don't mean you just need to give Him the Sunday school answer, Jesus. What else? Over this last year, since that last Christmas, the gifts have you received from God? What things has come from His hand that you can give glory to Him about this Christmas? I would like for us to silently ponder for a moment or two. If you'd like to close your eyes, if that's helpful, please do. But just think back over the past year, and perhaps even over this Christmas season. What are the gifts that God has given you that you can give Him glory and praise for? Let's be silent together for a moment.